pair. I'm sure you could fit these into your van. You really uh, want me to take these cereal boxes? Uh, abso absolutely. I've got Batman Returns, and I've got some Wheaties. I've got many more that you've got uh, room for. Hey, look! There's Pete Seeger! Where? Where is Pete? Where? Where in the hell did he go? <laughs> Comic Tim! Where's Ghost Avengers? Thanks for joining once again. My name is Dave. I am a comic book collector, a seller, and an enthusiast. What I like to do on this show is talk about comics, show you some good stuff, bring you into this community of a comic book cult. Yes, you will drink the black goo. Okay. Every Wednesday, Where's Ghost Wednesday, my comic book auction and claim sale where you can buy some of the books you see. And every Sunday night is Sunday of sit down. So you watch this episode of the morning, tune in, usually at 6 p.m. Pacific on Sunday evening, Sunday of sit down. Everything involves my name. Don't forget to smash like or just gently touch it. If you're not subscribed, gently subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. So we had gotten to Jim's house on Friday night. We looked through some books in his office, but Saturday was the day devoted to digging. So we started digging through his extensive collection of graded books that he had started getting graded about 10 years ago, just kind of as a hobby. He did sell some off. He had, I don't know, something like 30 boxes of raw comics there. Me and Jim, we, we started talking about it. We came to an agreement of doing a commission-based sale. Spoiler alert, I got everything. And I will be selling all of it, with the exception of the stuff that I got for myself and my PC and the stuff that Joe got for himself in his PC. So why don't we look at some footage here? I'll see you on the other side. Nice little just all Moon Knight run. This is like the whole entire run because you got the number ones graded. So it's like everything else. I've got some other number ones someplace uh, here. Such a great okay. cover. Oh, there's some great covers in there. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. some great covers. Oh, God, I'm hoping you have it. Please, I know you have one graded. Please have it. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, dear. First, Stephen Platt. Second, Stephen Platt. Oh, yeah. It's the only one I need for the entire run. Well, then I think you should... I think I should. ...do something with that. Yeah, one. and then, so you have one of these... You have one of these graded. graded. I saw that. Graded. yeah. Yeah, these are, I mean, to me, like after McFarlane... He became my next favorite artist, Stephen Platt. And then there's Bill Sainz. That's a great cover. I love the cape on that cover. What else we got in here? I have no idea. Uh, oh, Shake a Spear. These are our uh, classics. And you know who did I mean, these covers? Pardon? You know who did this cover? Uh, no. Bill Sainz. Kevin, 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 Bill Sainz. Kevin, 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 Jim, this is so much fun. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm enjoying watching you guys have fun with it. I know you told me you have some silver, and it's like mostly DC, but it's pretty cool that it's... Yeah, if, if I have any silver, it's going to be DC. Yeah. Oh! He's a little comic. He's a little comic. He's a little He's a little comic. He's so stuffed with stuffing. You have Alpha Flight number ones in every box just to make sure you never lose one. Along with Turok. Yeah. Uh, oh, number that's one. cool. Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No big deal. Yeah, it's all turtles. It's the whole... It's all of the... It's, it's turtles, 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 turtles. I like turtles. All right. You're this was from uh, 1988, uh, a hardcover, and they were delayed. And so as a result of the delay, we got a, please make your choice of three choices all at once. Uh, for a certificate for three comic books. It's sealed, but I can see it through the light. Oh, you did open it. But I didn't cash it in, I don't think. Holy shit. Send yeah. it in. No, don't send that <laughs> in. That's cool. Is it signed by anybody? CHP. Okay. Yeah, and I didn't send it in because it occurred while I was overseas. And this was delayed. Uh, it took forever. This is the first hardcover collected edition? Yep. A limited Bring edition of 1,000 copies. Yeah. Jesus. 
and I I think it takes time to you know rather than just a signature. Oh yeah. Uh, to do a picture and uh, so here let me stick these oh, treasures yeah. back in there. Oh, one woman sixty nine. Nice. You got one of these graded um, in the action comics, right? Uh, no. Yes, action. The peanut butter one. Right. That is the more rare one. So these are like eighty seven, maybe. Does that sound right? Uh, yes. Yeah. What else? Oh, these came with the figures. <laughs> the, the, these, the, the Super Friends figures. Oh, this came with the cells. This was came with those facsimile uh, animation cells. Oh, oh there they are. No. Uh, West Coast Avengers. He's the high, I'm the low. We Man, and that's team. Joe. Behind the camera. Healy pedigree. Oh, God, no. <laughs> hardly, hardly. Hardly, the hardly pedigree. So there's nothing pedigree about me. After a long, arduous talk over a great cup of coffee in Marscapone scones. Yes, from Bluebird Bakery in downtown Sandpoint, Idaho. It looks like I am going to take charge of selling... 95% of this comic book collection that is a glorious comic book collection that belonged to Jim for how many centuries? <laughs> They've been around me for a long time, though I haven't, you know, they're sort of like the children you have that go off and you don't see them for 60 years and then they come back and you, so these are going away and uh, I have not bonded with them over time, so... These are unbonded comic books, single owner, most of them. So some of them are in, in Slabalicious, like... Yeah, that's yeah. only a 9.6. Yeah, we can do better than that. No big deal. Yeah, no, we can do better than that, Dave, Dave. Yeah, we can. Uh, you know what we can do better that with that with? How about two nine eights? Uh, new stand, no less. Oh. New stand. <laughs> Once again, anyway, no big deal. No yeah. big deal. No big deal in this world. But uh, it's time that they move out of my life and that they can find better homes with people who enjoy them and love them and will cherish them uh all i did was begat them you begat but you know what begatting things and and being the curator is an important part of, of i've taken history. care of them i've taken care of them and uh so i'm having dave That's along me. with joe yeah. uh move my collection into another yeah. another realm so wish us luck in the months ahead okay we're talking about three copies of Amazing Spider-Man 252 that received the restored grade. Mm -hmm. And it says on their uh, grader notes, small amount of color touch on less left center front cover. Now I bought these three as well as other ones from a newsstand. Mm -hmm. And so it's this little thing right here oh. between this yellow streak and her green arm. And if you ha you have to move it around, but you can see, and it's in the same place oh, on all yeah. three of these. I can and see. And so, it. you know, I, what I wonder was somebody counting, doing inventory when these magazines came in with a little ballpoint pen mm -hmm. in his or her hand uh, and marked it. But all three of them are in the same place because I've been the only owner of this, and these are ones that I bagged immediately when I got home. A first Iron Fist in a seven L. A Detective 583, the first appearance of Scarface in the Ventriloquist, two nights. And then you've got the first horse guy, Beta Raymond William. But not just one of those. You've got a 9-6 in the newsstand. But not just one of those. You've, you've got two more 9-8 newsstands. So basically what Jim did is he went to the newsstand and he's like, Horses? I love horses with hammers. And he bought them all. And then he went to the next newsstand. He's like, horses? I love horses with hammers. Word got around town. And then all of a sudden, every motherfucker's coming up to Jim and being like, you like horses? Here's some more horses with hammers. And that's the story of how he had so many graded copies. There we go. All right, so, so far we've got fucking eight long boxes in here. Joe, are we going to be able to do this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I played uh, lots of Mario Brothers. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Dude. There he is, in the wild, the human forklift, the Scar Man. You, you did say eleven dollars an hour, right? Seven. <sighs> okay, good deal, good deal. And a Turok one for every box. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> Let's hope the tires hold up on this. A moment of truth. Ugh. <sighs>
<laughs> we are left Sandpoint, Idaho. And if you look back here, you can see that all of Jim's collection that was already located in Sandpoint is now with me. Um, and the deal was for me to sell it. And I'm really, really stoked to have some of the stuff uh, for myself. And I'm really excited to tackle the job of being the seller of Jim's collection. And it was a fantastic time. Meeting Jim was everything and more. I'm driving. Anyway, uh, see ya. I'll see you at the crossroads. See you on the long line. I'll see you at the crossroads. Crossroads. And I'm gonna miss everybody. And I'm gonna miss everybody. And now you're gonna see what I got. We worked out some good numbers with Jim. Jim was more than happy. He isn't really, was not really interested in the money. He just wanted this stuff to go to a good home. So that being said, here, you're going to see the stuff that went into my good home. In the future, you're going to be able to get some of the stuff into your good home. Check this out. I've never seen this before. Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, number 137. But what's cool about this, it's Neil Adams and Jack Kirby working together for a Superman book. That's a Jack Kirby cover. I don't know anything about this book. I would love to see a raw copy of it just to see the interiors. Uh, it's a Kirby story, Kirby and Coletta art, and a Kirby and Adams cover from 1971. A cool piece of comic book history to have in the collection. One I was not aware of. Are you aware of this? I am a huge Neil Adams fan. I have a Neil Adams Batman tattoo on my leg. This is a uh, Superman 233, the very, very, Famous Superman Neil Adams cover breaking out of the chains of kryptonite. It's a 6.0. It's beautiful copy. Saga of the Swamp Thing number 37 in a 9-8 newsstand. The first appearance of John Constantine. What else is there to say? Alan Moore's story, John Toddlebin. It's classic. So I was in heaven when I saw some of his graded books for Batman. I had a chance to buy for myself some of the biggest Silver Age Batman books. Starting with just a classic Neil Adams cover, but a high-grade Batman 244 in a 9-0 with Ra's al Ghul and a bare-chested Batman with a sword in him. But his mask is still on because, God forbid, Ra's al Ghul took his mask off to disgrace him. He knows who he is. He knows he's Bruce Wayne. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, I hate graded books. I have very mixed feelings about graded books, both as a collector and as a seller. As a seller, sometimes it's a lot harder to sell these books. As a collector, I don't necessarily want my books in slabs, but at the same time, I do want to preserve some of them, especially the older ones. So I'm conflicted, and I, I think that's okay to be conflicted in, in, in the collectibles industry. Batman 234 in a 7-0 off-white pages. The first appearance of Silver Age Two-Face. I've built up this collection of Batman Grails. I've got the Two-Face, right? I have the Riddler from like a couple months ago. I also do have the first appearance of Raz al Ghul, Batman 232, 8 0 off white pages. Raz al Ghul, one of the central Batman characters, one of the central pieces of the Bat universe with the Lazarus Pit and Talia and then Damien being Batman's son. My favorite Batman book that I picked up from Jim that I'd never had before is the iconic Batman 227. The Neil Adams cover homaging Detective Comics. I'll put that on there, right there. The Neil Adams cover in a 7.5. And he brought his horror sensibility in the homage to that cover. And he pulled it off brilliantly. It, it's such a brilliant, beautiful book. You know, I'm not going to pass up the chance to have a beautiful copy of it. I did pick up some raw books from Jim. Uh, I just wanted to highlight, for me, the one big book that I got. And that is Moon Knight number 57. Stephen Platt did the last six issues of the Mark Spector Moon Knight series. It was his first work published in Marvel Comics. Making muscles upon muscles upon muscles really spoke to me in, in a post-McFarland uh, Marvel world. I've always needed this book. I have the rest of the run all in my collection. And it was always too expensive for me to buy and as a, like I said, as a kid, and then recently I was just like, I'm not going to spend it. I'll find this book for cheaper. And sure enough, I did. That is Stephen Platt homaging Todd McFarlane, Amazing Spider-Man 300, 301. If I have an opportunity to get a 9-8, I might as well have taken it. And that's Wolverine number one, the first solo Wolverine title, Frank Miller, Chris Claremont, the iconic bub cover. And it's a 9-8. It's an old slab. I don't need to re-slab it, but I could if I want. Either way, 
it's just nice to have a perfect copy of this. I, I didn't have this as a kid. I've had it multiple times since. I believe there's one right here for sale along with a number two, but a nine eight's a different story. It's a pedigree, it's a premium, it's a whatever you want to call it, bub, snicked. Next up, another book. Didn't think I'd ever have a chance to own it. Probably wasn't on my radar. Eh? Now is a different story. That's Daredevil 131, the first appearance of Bullseye in a 9-0. Bullseye, I always loved Bullseye as a character. He was mean, and he could kill you with a pen. So Jim put this in my hands while we were looking through his books, and he's like, you need this. You need to have this. I have never fucking seen this in my life. I'm still not even sure I know what this is. The Barber of Fleet Street, Sweeney Todd, a mini comic zine by my favorite writer, the master Neil Gaiman and artist Michael Zuli. It's a one shot produced in 1992 by Spider Baby Graphics and it is a 9.8. There's only two on the census and this is one of them. Priceless artifact, I would call it. I don't slab everything that I get just because I don't want to. I will slab older books, but something like this, I, who, what is this? Find me another one of these and I'll buy it. <laughs> Speaking of Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane, this one speaks for itself. Spawn 9, the first appearance of Angela in a 9-8 newsstand. So first off, Spawn newsstands, very tough to find. I can honestly say I don't remember seeing Spawn on in the newsstands when I was a kid because I used to go to Walden Books and I used to go to Tower Records. I used to go to B. Dalton, Barnes & Noble. So I used to go to those stores because they were all close by to me in malls that I shopped in and I even worked in one. And I don't remember seeing newsstand Spawn books. So to have this in a 9.8 newsstand, Neil Gaiman wrote it. There's there's a lot of history in this book and to have it in a 9.8 newsstand, this is pure purely for my enjoyment just to have it. Another book that if you had asked me, hey, will you own this in 2022? I'd say probably not because it, it went skyrocketing. And that is Werewolf by Night number 32 in a 5.5, five, the first appearance of Moon Knight, a.k.a. Mark Spector, a.k.a. Stephen Grant, a.k.a. The British guy, Jimmy, the limo driver. Arthur Harrow's enemy. In a 5-5, five five, and that is the first appearance of Moon Knight, and it's mine, and I don't want to get rid of it ever. This is a book that I didn't know I wanted so badly until it was in my hands. Another book I've owned a couple of times, but when a 9-8 white page newsstand staring you in the face, I guess you gotta buy it. That is uh, Star Wars number 68, the first appearance of the Mandalorians in comics and got that great Boba Fett cover, yellow. I love that cover by Gene Day. And it's just such a great, fantastic book. I'm a Star Wars freak. You all know it's not just Jar Jar, it's all Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I have since I was a kid. There were seven of these or eight of these, so I had to buy one. And that is Secret Wars number eight in a 9.8 newsstand dark cherry red cover very tough book to get in a 9.8 newsstand very tough book to have in that grade in a very dark red cover generally the directs like this are more towards orange so if you want a bolder you're gonna a bolder color cover you're gonna have to go with the newsstand and i'd love to know if anybody knows if maybe these were printed before or separately so needless to say i have a lot of copies of this in a 98 that will be for sale over the coming months so this is one of the the things that i couldn't believe when me and jim were talking about like what he has you see it on a list and you're like oh okay you know like oh maybe they're not first prints or this is the key to knowing that this whole thing is a, a huge catfish scam to get me out to Idaho to murder me. You know, like... You bet. Uh, Joe and I have been on this together. Yeah. I mean, uh, because of the comic books you purchased along the way. Yeah. Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I've, been, I've been needing to get you out of the picture for a while, but... So what we have here is... Um, well, this is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, first print, 9-0. Uh, Holy Grail. 3,000 in the first run, and I think they account for about 2,000 of them. Yeah, I bought them for $1.50 uh, back in 1984. I saw an ad for it in the Comic Buyer's Guide, and I bought two, and then I liked them so much, I bought two more and have since traded them uh, or sold one. and Find a way to best that, and you did by having one being a 9-2. Uh, 
and these have not been cleaned or pressed. So, yeah. but I don't. But they're black, and a color break would make all the difference. But how long ago did you get these graded? As you can see, they're old these, labels. They're old labels. I would say 2002. This is comic book history. This is the reason why indie comic books got so big. Because right. this was it. This is the beginning of it. Like the 60s had the underground, but mm -hmm. the, this is it. This is. This uh, and you and you think about you know. This is one that made it big time, and that's in capital letters, big time. Yeah, this is pop and, culture. And so many, and I'd be curious to see what happened to the artists or the writers of the so many ones that did not. Right, right. You know, I mean, but Eastman and Laird certainly. Yeah, they, they, they had the formula, and it was like a joke that turned out to just be something that gripped enough people. It hit enough people. Well, Joe, you said you were of the age. Oh, what, yeah. What about the why turtles? Uh... Yeah, you know, I don't remember. I think my first exposure was probably the cartoon. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I loved it. But when the movie came out, that was Boom. like... Oh. Cartoon was for me, but it would make sense because you're a little bit younger than me. The movie hit you. I watched that movie so many times. And then the sequel <laughs> came out and it had Vanilla Ice doing mm. the turtle rap. And... <laughs> Uh, See, it was, it was, I yeah. forgot. Yeah. It was the figures and the animated for me. And, and the video games, Turtles in Time, I had on the SNES. Oh, yeah. And that game still holds up amazing today. In fact, they just made a kind of a unofficial sequel to it. I was coming off of Frank Miller and Daredevil. Uh, All right. With, with Electra, And I fell in love with her. And then they're spinning off. But yeah, you don't have these without Miller's Daredevil run. I, 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 that's why I think I mailed away. I was living in Billings, Montana at the time, and um, I mean, that, that's Miller right there. Oh, like, yes. this is Miller. The, the yeah, the the negative, mm -hmm. the use of the negative. Yeah, no, I I fell in love with Miller's run of Daredevil, and especially Electra, and when she died in eight, 181 by Bullseye. My heart was breaking. Break, yeah. yeah. And then he goes to the grave and the next dish. Oh, my God. Mm. You know, I mean, great stuff. And it wears well. Now, you know that I am a big Turtles fan and Jim was a big Turtles fan. He bought those number one first prints. But he does have a great selection of graded Turtles books. First up to bat is a TMNT number four first print, 9-8. Such a great cover, grew to become one of the biggest icons, the biggest uh, franchises in pop culture history in my lifetime. I mean, they stood the test of time over and over and over, and it started with the comics in 84. I was never able to get my hands on this until now, and this is the Raphael one. In a 9-6, first appearance of Casey Jones, second most expensive Turtles book. I guess it's neck and neck with number two. But uh, if not, it's the third. Yeah, look at this cover. Oh, this cover is such a kick-ass cover. And it's a Kevin Eastman cover. And so now I've got the graded copy. I'm not going to complain. And finally, no, I didn't get that book. But I did get this book. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Third printing in a 9-0. What else is there to say? It's the third printing. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of copies were made. Maybe I'll flash it on the screen. But this is a third print. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. For right now, I'm really excited to have this. This completes my Turtles run right here. I have a fourth print, but the fourth print is not as cool because the third print is the oversized one that matches all the others. I want to thank Jim for letting me buy all this stuff for myself. And I also want to thank Jim for being super hospitable. As of right now, I will be working on selling this stuff for him. By bringing some of these books to you because Jim just wanted me to be the person to get the books from him into good homes. You'll be seeing a lot of these books out for sale. There's going to be lots of stories to tell, lots of books to talk about. So I'm just really overwhelmed in a good way by the amount of work that I have ahead of me. It wouldn't be possible without all of you people watching. So I appreciate you. Don't forget, stop by on Wednesday, say hi, buy a book if you want. Come by, hang out on Sunday if you want. It's all depending on your schedule. Either way, watch this stuff on the replay. Smash the like button, subscribe, and... Bill saying Kevin Kevin saying weird. Bill saying Kevin saying weird. Sick of weird. It's motherfucking personal collection. Damn right. <laughs> 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 <laughs>